an internet connection, some fast storage, and a NAS. These three things will allow you and your team to work together from shared storage no matter where in the world you are. Let me show you how. Welcome to Digi Pro Tips. I'm Andy Edmondson, and here we work smarter, not harder, which gives you time to be more creative. Back in the hazy days of 2019, pre pandemic, I had days where I or one of my team would need to work remotely, either from home or from somewhere around the world, and have access to our shared storage. There's not really a solution that beats being physically connected in the office to your shared storage. However, there are solutions that do work well, and I'm going to show you one of them right now. This video focuses on using a NAS for remote editing and design purposes, but the methods here can be applied to other cloud service providers such as Dropbox or Google Drive, you know, all of the other ones. Where you work is incredibly important to the efficiency of a remote worker. Working in a coffee shop or somewhere with patchy Wi-Fi is never going to get anywhere near the same editing experience and efficiency as someone who is connected, hardwired into a high speed connection to their shared storage, to the internet and being distraction free. So you need to ensure that your editors, your motion designers, your sound editors, whoever it might be, they all have a good working environment because their internet speed is now going to be the bottleneck in your system. I'm recommending that they are connected to the internet via an ethernet connection. I'll get onto why exactly upload and download speeds matter when I get onto storage and editing workflows. Before we look at the process, it's worth talking about the type of shared storage that you have set up for you and your post team to work from. And if you don't already have shared storage set up and you are looking at getting shared storage, then it's worth going back through a couple of my older videos, Synology, up there and again, up there, QNAP, on which is the best size NAS to get for you and your team. Get yourself familiar with what you need to be able to make this work and then come straight back here. Both Synology and QNAP are suitable for remote editing and Synology is really easy for newcomers to network attached storage and has a bunch of features that we will be looking at in a little bit. But QNAP do have some more advanced features, one of which is called Hybrid Mount, which I will talk about a little bit later, but I'll probably do another video on another time. The second reason I suggest one of these two NAS brands is because they both feature a cloud sync service, which will be pivotal for your remote editing setup. So pro tippers, for this to work, we need a cloud service, but not just any cloud service. We can create our own cloud service, that is right. There are a couple of options here. We can use one of the many cloud services that I mentioned earlier, or we can create our own private cloud. Now I initially disregarded this type of setup back when I was looking into remote editing, but that was actually foolish because in the end, this route saved me the most amount of time and enabled the most efficient way of remote working. So Synology has an inbuilt cloud service called Synology Drive, and for QNAP, it's called QSync. Now for connecting other cloud services to your NAS, QNAP has something called Hybrid Mount, and that allows you to connect your NAS directly to one of the other cloud service providers and sync locally your material from that cloud down to your NAS. But that's not what we're gonna to use today, and I will do another video on that another time. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to use Synology Drive, but the processes once you've installed the apps are pretty much the same for QNAP's QSync feature as well. So first of all, go to the app store on your Synology and find Synology Drive and install it on the Synology itself. For QNAP, do exactly the same, but install something called QNAP QSync Central. Then on each remote worker's computer that is going to have access to your NAS remotely, you need to install the corresponding application. And for Synology, that's still called Synology Drive, but for QNAP, it's just called QSync. You will need your login credentials that you would usually use when you're in the office to connect to the NAS for this service. Um, and that may be set at higher or lower levels depending on who you are. Uh, in the company, but you will need those login credentials to access the NAS remotely. Once the applications are installed, start them up and you will need to link the server to the client. And this, you will need to know the IP address of the NAS, the external IP address. You might need to do some port forwarding on the switch um, where your NAS is located, but ideally the services should find it by themselves. 
just using the IP address. And then you can use those login credentials to link the server app and the client app together and then create an encrypted connection between the two for you to sync locally. Once the link is set up, you'll have the option to choose the folders and subfolders and subfolders and subfolders and subfolders within your NAS uh, file system and which you would like to sync locally to your PC. Be wary here, you don't want to choose absolutely everything because your PC does pretty, I'm pretty sure will not have the same amount of storage space that your NAS does. So only sync the media that you need. Once you have done that and you've chosen the folders that you need and want to be synced, you will have a two-way connection between your computer and the NAS. And so any changes that you make will be mirrored on the NAS itself and therefore on every other computer, uh, every other remote worker's computer that is also connected. It will sync those changes, which means if somebody makes a change to a Premiere project or I add a couple of files to a folder. Those will get synced to the NAS and therefore to the other, my other colleagues that are working with that connection. So on my other Mac, if I bring that screen up, I will be now, I can now see those files syncing to that Mac because I've uploaded them from this one. A quick important note on Synology Drive, go to the advanced tab and make sure on-demand sync is turned off. Leaving this feature on will mean that when you click a file, it will download it, but it won't keep it on your PC indefinitely. It's like a Dropbox feature that allows you to view media without it being taking, without it taking up lots of your local storage. But for editing purposes, you need to make sure that it is stored locally and it stays there. Otherwise, it can result in missing media errors and unlinked media in your timeline and all that jazz that we don't want to happen. It's pretty much like any other cloud service, local sync functionality, but the difference is this is syncing media from your NAS directly to your PC, which means if you then go to the office, you still have all of that media there. You don't have to pull it down like you would from a cloud service. It's all there. So when we get onto proxy workflows in a minute, that's gonna be crucial because that enables you to edit so much faster. But it does mean one of the real bottlenecks in this setup, which I mentioned earlier, is the internet speed of your remote workers. Because the cloud service is using your external internet speed to sync those files between the NAS and your remote worker, it's their internet speed that is the throttle here. And that will determine how fast they can send and receive files. Of course, if you have many, many, many users all connected to the NAS at the same time, then your internet speed at the office could also be a bottleneck. But I think you'd probably need to be, you know, 20 plus users for that to be a bit of a problem. And one other thing to bear in mind with this method is your storage space on your PC. You can use this to sync to external drives but you need to be conscious of how much media you do need to sync and where that's gonna be stored. But you also need to think, I need the access to that media to be fast to be able to edit from it. But don't let that be the thing that stops your editing workflow dead in the water. There are ways that we can manage this. File management and proxy workflows are one way of doing that. If you're not using proxies, you really, really need to. Using proxies as part of your workflow and syncing only the proxies instead of the full res media could be the difference between an outstanding editing experience and a nightmarish editing experience with slow connections, files not downloading, missing media, unlinked files in your timeline. With proxies, that could all be avoided. The way I like to handle it is that whoever shot the footage, whoever is in charge of the shoot, is also in charge of ingesting that media to the shared storage and therefore also creating the proxies for everyone else to be able to use. You will need a proxy process of your own, but ideally everyone follows that same process and therefore you never run into any trouble with this proxy workflow. Everyone is working from the same page. You also can edit faster with proxies. Once you're done, you can either choose to sync that full res media or you can go into the office or you can share your project with somebody that is in the office that has access to the full res media for you to finalize and deliver that timeline. Simple, right? That's working smarter, not harder, which enables you to be more creative because you have the time. One of the last parts of this seemingly large puzzle is file management and making sure that all of your workers, because they are remote, are all working in the same way and using the same file structures. 
By this, I mean that your folder structure is set up in the same way for every project. Your Premiere, DaVinci, After Effects projects are all set up with the same bins, the same timeline settings, and everyone is working from the same process. So that there can be no errors when somebody jumps into another project, if somebody is off sick, if somebody is setting up something completely from scratch, you know that you can jump into that and it will be exactly how you remember it should be. It's all about efficiency when working remotely. I like to have this all written down in a post-production guideline document that I can give to any new starters and they will be able to read that and they'll be able to start working instantly in the same way as everybody else. This keeps everything in line and nobody's bad habits get in the way of anybody else working. As I use Synology Drive in this tutorial, it probably makes most sense for you to take a look at Synology NASes in this video right here. Oh, yeah.